live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer and Ask Massimo. <laughs> Massimo's an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, so two engineers. Actually, two engineers yeah. for the price of one. Welcome to another fantastic Ask an Engineers. We're broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters. With us is special guest, Massimo Banzi. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's also me, Lady Ada, the engineer. You also have Phil on camera control. So it's a little crowded. Yeah, maybe I'll, be, a little bit. I'll be off to the side a little bit. These are the real stars. You want to make sure that we... <laughs> I just run the cameras now. We see everybody. Uh, we've got a fantastic Arduino-filled show. That's right. We've got all sorts of cool stuff. We've got codes. We've got trivia questions. Can we show what's on the show tonight? We have Arduinos. Yeah. All right. Tonight's code is Arduino. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store that's in stock. Just use the code Arduino on checkout. And including Arduinos. Including Arduinos. That's right. <laughs> we'll go over the show and tell some fantastic stuff in the world of makers sharing their cool projects. We will go down memory lane with Arduino. Massimo is here. We'll talk about maybe the first Arduino. We'll talk about what's coming out soon. All sorts of fun stuff. We'll ask him what is We'll talk about what's coming out soon. All sorts of fun stuff. We'll ask him what his favorite Arduino is. Uh, <laughs> Massimo will be at the Hardware Innovation Workshop and also at Maker Faire. We'll talk about that. If there's time, we'll go over the Adafruit mailbag. We'll talk about some open source hardware. Adafruit Learning System. Time Travel Tuesday. Wearable Wednesday. We also have 3D Thursday with some neat stuff in the world of 3D. Some new products, possibly. Uh, what's your question? We we'll have a trivia question, and we'll show a picture of our cat, MOSFET. <laughs> All that and more. It's actually that picture. On so ask an engineer. You can just skip. We, you can just skip that. It's the same. It's the same photo. It's the same photo. It's but same photo. but the thing is, parents, they have their kids watch the show, and we started when MOSFET lived in the Adafruit mm -hmm. factory before we got to this place. So every week they'd have to. They want you know. Mom, Dad, where's the cat? <laughs> so I know that, the pressures. The pressures are okay. A, so once a again, cat. as we mentioned, the code is Arduino. Ten percent off everything in the store. Not Duino, Arduino. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we have a no Duino policy. It's our promise. The only one, the only one that it was Borduino when we asked. That was a million years ago. That was the grandfather one. But you, our promise, our promise, we will never call something <laughs> Duino. Christmas tree, Christmas tree kits, Facebook links. Uh, yeah, as it. As, yeah. There's a third thing we promise. We won't put we don't put all the social media buttons all over everything. We don't okay. like that. What was that other promise? We, we won't made? put advertising on Adafruit. Yeah. Like, ugh. But then what was there was one more that we recently came up with, no? I think we said we might not take venture capital or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? We That's, keep making promises. I can't even keep track of it. Yeah, but and we, we're not gonna call something Duino. We'll never call something Duino. <laughs> now and it's recorded. You can't take it back. Thank There's you. Good, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so let's first start off. Um, show and tell. Um, happened. Uh, was this one of the? Uh, this is the first time you've been on the Adafruit Show and Tell, right? Because the last time you were on the show, this didn't exist. Uh, no, I think it existed, but I wasn't on camera during that. Scene. Oh, okay. I was. Uh, You're off to the side. Well, I'm glad you were here. <laughs> so, um, Lady Ada, tell us what was on the Show and Tell. Uh, show and Tell was fun. We had a, we had a couple of people show up. Some uh, repeats. Some people came back, and some new some new projects. Tony uh, showed up with a Raspberry Pi rice cooker watcher. And uh, the, the cute thing about this was he, instead of trying to like sense current or temperature or whatever, like and determine whether it's on, he actually just put a photo cell up to the warm light, which is like a little on light. That was a clever hack. And it just, it just tells you if it's on or not, which is actually like a way easier way to detect if something's on. Yeah. And then he has a little mini website. And I guess he just wants to track his rice cooking, which is cool. Kevin showed off the e-paper badges that he uh, designed for the uh, open, open hardware source summit. hardware with the so uh, um, photo booth. And he made a photo booth using yeah. Raspberry Pi and the big red button, yeah. and it uses LED the Pi strip. camera to take a photo. And hopefully, he'll finish the code by next week. So get on that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, Roberto, no, no came Roberto and his uh, lovely assistant came back and showed their uh, Press Your Luck clone called Press Your Button. They've been working on this for a couple months. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I think uh, his young assistant was born after the show aired. <laughs> John W yes. came back with more OLED watch updates. He showed off the watch, and they showed off these really great photos that he took. He was inspired by the photos that our John engineer takes to, yeah. to take some artsy electronics photos. Maybe it's a trend. Anyone named John who does electronics have to take artsy photos. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. And then Rick Winscott showed up again. He's been just on a bot. Fury, yeah. he's just making all these bots. He made this adorable little Adabot 
with an Arduino in its little belly and servos and its little head and little arms. It's super cute. And yeah. it's super cute. Uh, had an Arduino in it and our servo shield. Yeah, because it had to control like eight servos. Yeah. And when you have that many servos, it actually it's it's hard to do it without having a standalone driver. So mm. we have this lovely servo shield, which is yeah. really popular. Okay. Um, and then uh, Ben's going to come back next week. Um, yeah, Ben had some project which was difficult too. Yeah, he had a website and I think it wasn't loading or something yeah. like that. So everybody on the show and tell um, gets a as seen on the show and tell sticker. Just like this. Like Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Getting on the show and tell is super awesome and fun and you should join us. All the cool kids are doing it. Go to plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit. Find the thread where we say comment here to get added to the show and tell circle. We'll add you if you yeah. comment there. And then you'll get invited every week at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, yeah. for now. Maybe not forever, yeah. but for now, <laughs> to show off your project. All right. Um, we're going to just jump right in. Um, Massimo's here. And for now, <laughs> to show off your project. All right. Um, we're going to just jump right in. Um, Massimo's here. And uh, I've known Massimo for years. And we'll start, you know, you can introduce yourself in a second. <laughs> but it's always great to have you here because Arduino is, the, this is what, Started, you know, this is where Adafruit, what people know Adafruit for. They know that uh, they can uh, anything in their imagination. They can uh, put stuff together with an Arduino. All the accessories, the shields, the code. We the, have the like we rights. have fifteen hundred products, but I think the Arduino, which is like the core item, was was number not even sixty three. Which what number? What ID is like thirty four or something? It's very like, early on. Very your, early. Your product. It's yeah. definitely a two digiter. Yeah. I remember when the we The startup pack is 65, we so were, it must be before then. When I was at Make, we were trying to figure out ways to wire money to Italy to get Arduinos. <laughs> and then once that happened, then um, you were able to get Arduinos yeah. shortly after that, too. Yeah, we'd go down and we'd like wire money. It was cool. Yeah. And All they're right. like, are you sending this to some like Italian prince who promised you $36 million? <laughs> we're like, no! The so, king is named Arduino, but that's just the bar, and they named the thing. So, Massimo, who are you, what do you do, and why are you here? Yeah, come up here. <laughs> wow. Come in. That's, that's Welcome to our home. Thank you. A set of difficult questions. Uh, well, I'm the co-founder of Arduino, and um, so it started off as a project that I did for my students because I also teach in design schools. Now I teach just a little bit, not, not that much. And also over the years as Arduino developed, I became the CEO. So now I oh, wow. spend most your time. Your Kingduino. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the, the five founders of Arduino, including me, and the people, you know, we're still all active. You know, I'm the CEO, but everybody sort of helps. Yeah. And Actually, advises. I have a photo. I, have, I, I might be the only one who has this. So this is a signed. I got all of you guys to sign. This is all the people on the Arduino team. They signed this. Yes. And then when you were at Adafruit, the other headquarters. Uh, all right. Yeah, we, we got we took a photo. So these oh, are uh, uh, mo most. Five? Yeah, all five. Yeah, all five. Plus. Um, Shigeru. Shigeru. Yeah, he yeah. happened to be visiting. Which is cool. He kind of needed an Arduino. So he yeah. Counts. yeah. He's like the Japanese branch. And yeah. so um, just to get started, uh, someone had asked a question on Twitter. What inspired you to develop the very first Arduino? And uh, right. and here's a photo of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a. Uh, <clears throat> That was like a very rough prototype. Um, well, yeah, so I, I teach uh, in these uh, design schools, and specifically I teach in, in places where we, we do interaction design. This idea that you know, we, when you're designing different objects, uh, until you're def designing so tables and chairs, you know, there are certain things you need to do, but once you design things with technology and people interact with them, you have to be able to design the way people interact with technology. So mm -hmm. the idea is that interaction design try to capture the way you interact, the, the interaction that you have with these devices. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of the things that designers need to, need to, need to do in, in that particular context is to build prototypes. So you have this tension between the fact that a lot of people come to the school without knowing any electronics, for sure. Maybe they know a little bit of programming, but usually not. So you need to be able to teach them very quickly, maybe in a couple of months, you take them from zero to programming and then doing electronics. So obviously, you know, I started teaching in, in this school in Italy in 2002. And we tried different things. So at the beginning, you know, like everybody else in the world, I copied what Tom Igo was doing at the ITP. So <laughs> I, was trying to, I looked at the way he was teaching, and I tried to sort of transfer a little bit of that. And we were using basic stamps. 
but they were like super expensive, especially in Italy because they were imported by a tiny company that was making like a huge markup. Uh, so okay. one, one, so they're already like forty dollars here in America. I can't even imagine what they were. Well, they costed like a hundred, the equivalent of hundred dollars. Yeah. So obviously, students wouldn't buy more than one, and when you had one, you kind of cherished and if it. You, if you broke it, that was it too. Oh, and they broke easy. They broke, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we also had some basic X24. They broke super easy. Like, they would just die on us. But also, they would run on Windows. Mm. You need a PC with serial ports. It's just a nightmare. So we did a number of experiments. I made a kind of platform that came before Arduino called the Programma 2003, which was PIC based. But it was all open source, and it was running on Windows, Mac, and Linux, so it was the first kind of experiment in that direction. Then with Casey Rees, one of my um, colleagues in Ivrea, who is also like a teacher at UCLA and a kind of electronic uh, artist. Uh, he has we, a show opening, actually, in, in uh, New York in a week. Oh, wow. You should, we, oh, we can I, go I, hang out with him. I totally need to go and, and say hello to him. And so we, we kind of were thesis advisor of this uh, amazing guy called uh, Hernando Barragan, who came up with wiring. And then after uh, that, we decided to take the work that we did with wiring and make it, rebuild it completely and make it open source and make it run on smaller processors, something that you could build yourself. So that picture that you show, it's, yeah. it's an attempt at making like a super simple version of wiring running on an At Atmega 8. Mm -hmm. and something that you could build yourself. And this terrible PCB comes from this service that, you know, you could get your PCB made in 24 hours, but obviously yeah. it came without any sort of silk yeah. or anything. But it worked. I was able to connect that to the parallel part and kind of ISP the code on it. And there's like an LED somewhere. I think in like the original picture there was thing. an LED somewhere that, that, um, that I was able to blink. So we sort of, I started working with David Quartier, yes, who was, at the school as a visiting researcher, who was one of the founders of Arduino. And then we pulled in David Mellis, who was one of the students. He re-implemented the whole code in one night. Wow. So yeah, we were like doing all these projects with the students and we needed to migrate away from the wiring board because we only had like 20 of them or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so we needed to go smaller and simpler. So we decided to migrate the code and Mellis, I told, we told Mellis, well, how many days would it take to you for you to do this? Maybe a week or something? So he started hacking away at midnight and at two o'clock he had the wow. code re-implemented. So it was right. interesting. And so we, we started. And really tired. <laughs> and uh, and I, I had an old photo because I have I have an I, I personally have an Arduino museum. I want to open up one in New York one day. We can so, open one right here. Yeah, on this desk. And so I have like the sign of all the team, and then I have some really old Arduinos, and then I have this photo. This was this was something that you made, right, Lamore? And then this was the one of the first Arduinos. Is this? I don't. Do um. You, this is so there's one thing to say that um, I when, I designed the the when I designed the first USB-based Arduino, I totally right? copied the circuit that uh, the oh, okay. FTDI circuit comes from the more. Yeah, okay. so that, totally that board copied. is the FTDI breakout that I made in 2002 yeah. um, and you at the Media online. Lab. And I made a bunch of these for all the Media Lab students because everybody at the Media Lab was like, it, the people were losing serial ports, but we still had to basically bootload or connect to, we had a, a, another microcontroller platform at the Media Lab that we were using. Mm -hmm. And so we had to basically, you know, the FTDI chip came out and was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. So I made a bunch of these breakouts also using this like low cost service and then I would cut them out by hand and solder them and I sold them to people at the Media Lab for like 20 bucks. And one of the things awesome. I wanted now to- Now we have FTDI friend, but yeah, back then this is the, the best we had. And one of the things I wanted to ask both of you, so you, mm -hmm. you both were doing open source mm -hmm. and you were able to get some information you were able to make stuff. So why did you, why, why not make um, Arduino closed source, like the basic stamp at the time? Well, on one hand, uh, we based Arduino on a lot of cool open source projects. And I think, you know, <laughs> it would be really hy hypocritical to just yeah. make a platform which is based on these beautiful open source blocks. Uh, and then at the top, you put your like, you know, the yeah. icing is all, uh, yeah. you know, proprietary, you know, that's that's stupid. Then also me and David and the others have been working with Linux for a long time. So we understood the power of having an open source platform where everybody can kind of contribute. And, and we also wanted something that people could build themselves if they, if they needed to. Because, you know, at the beginning, there was no indication that Arduino was going to, you know, take off the way it did. So we wanted people to be able to build it. 
Then after we did all of this, something else happened, which kind of put sort of the last word on this whole open source thing. But, you know, we were already releasing everything. But then the school where I was teaching was actually being shut down, and it was ultimately owned by the Italian telecom company. And we were really worried that someday the, you know, the, the lawyer was going to show up and say, okay, everything that's been done in the school goes into a drawer yeah. and we own it. Because it's their so, intellectual property. Maybe they want to sell it or do something. Who knows? So I had it made open source, but I never really got like as, you know, and I didn't really develop Arduino fully during my uh, work time. I also developed it at night mm -hmm. um, when David was running his karaoke competition in his room, uh, between <laughs> one karaoke competition and the other. <laughs> yeah. We worked on the Arduino, so I actually went to the process of getting the director of the school to say, this is, you know, we approve this as open source. So it was also a way to protect Arduino from, you know, lawyers kind of taking it away and say, you know, this is becomes proprietary. So in the end, you know, it confirmed that there was a big value and it protects also the investment that people make into the platform. Yeah. I think uh, I'll ask some more questions later, but um, one of the things that I always talk about is Arduino is the most successful open source hardware platform. Yeah, there's, nothing el there's nothing else out there that's open source software and open source hardware. Mm -hmm. And documentation. And the, you know, that, 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 that it's a success story. I remember when people used to say, well, when will something be mass? Like, when will there be more than like 10,000 of these things, or 20,000, or 30,000, or 100,000, or, yeah. or a million? And it's really neat because um, every single time something happens with Arduino, you know that all the value comes along with it. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn something from it. There's code with it. Um, and speaking of, because a lot of people are here to ask about this tonight, um, there's two new Arduino projects and products on the horizon. One is the Arduino Yun. All right. So we just did Arduino past. Now we're doing yes. Arduino present That's and good. future. Present happened. Future. Yeah. It's already the future. There's the Yun, and then there's the Arduino um, robot. Some uh, people have seen these. So what is the Arduino Yun? Let's start start with that. Okay. So the Arduino Yun is this. Um, we wanted to have a platform that uh, would have Wi-Fi natively and also would make it easier to build uh, products that have Wi-Fi, but also connect to complex web services. Because mm -hmm. the problem with a lot of simple Wi-Fi interfaces is that the Arduino itself it's only like, what, 32K of flash memory and maybe a couple of kilobytes of RAM. You can't really, you know, process a JSON file and, you know, it, it, you can, but it's really, it's really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like, you know. So we wanted, so we, we looked at different technologies and we kind of saw, saw this, um, uh, kind of the electronics inside these access points, like uh, the TP-Link access point that a lot of people yeah. use. Yeah, they're like $20 it's, access points. Yeah, it's like a one single chip Linux machine running at 400 megahertz with native Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and with like some flash and some RAM, you, you, make it, you make it run. So then I bumped into this company that actually was making these modules based on that technology mm. called Dog Hunter. So we started to work with them a little bit to figure mm. out how we could combine so the, the, the board has the shape of a regular Arduino, and it contains an Atmega 32U4, so it's, a, it's the same as the Arduino Micro. Uh, but then it's, it talks to the, to the, you know, under the little sort of metal casing, there's, Let's go back a, to the other thing. There's, a, there's a Linux machine running at 400 so, megahertz. So there's the, 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 the Ethernet port, yes. the USB port, mm -hmm. then there's the, right behind the USB port, there is the, the Atmega. Yep. There's a little micro USB port kind of in the middle there. Yes. And then kind of with the sticker on it, that's a metal can that's covering yes. electronics. So it's not just a piece of metal for jewelry. There's got electronics underneath it. Yeah. And it's just a shield that's protecting. Mm. So underneath there is a Linux computer. Yeah, there's essentially a small access point. Very teeny. Because you can, you can use this as an access point if you want to. If, but also the work that we did, uh, which you know, was was Can you hide us? A big, it, a was a big task in a way. And there's a little Wi-Fi antenna behind. Yeah. Okay. So you get the Wi-Fi antenna over there. Underneath, you see, you know, there's the single chip Linux machine, flash, uh, RAM, and then underneath the board we have this particular chip, which is a USB hub that also implements an, uh, a memory card reader. So the board okay. itself has an, a micro SD card and it has a USB port. So the idea is that if you plug a USB memory on one port or you put a micro SD, the little s small USB hub also provides the Linux machine with storage. Store, yeah, okay. 
So, and effectively, but I think also, you know, when we work on products, we never just work on the hardware and just dump it on people, because that's not what we do. We also try to work on the software platform. So we did spend quite a lot of time building these software libraries where mm. if you don't know anything about Linux, you can actually operate this whole thing all from the Arduino side. Mm. So the Arduino has a library okay. that communicates with the Linux side. You can actually connect to the network and do a few things directly from the Arduino code. And this thing is also running a small web server. So for example, if you put files in a specific directory on a micro SD card and you plug it in, they get mounted under mm. the root. Uh, this thing is running some processes written in Python. They do all this kind of connect connectivity to different services. And also, we, so we provide a lot of examples of how you connect to different services online. And also, we looked a little bit at the user experience as well. So if you, if you get the board and you press a button for more than 30 seconds, it will basically, re this will turn into a Wi-Fi access point. You connect mm. with your browser, oh, you set all the parameters through a web interface, and then you press the button and you configure the Wi-Fi on the board. Oh, mm. that's cool. And so then yeah. if you want, you can access the actual control panel of the Linux machine, where you have like hundreds of settings. You can change the routing between the Wi-Fi yeah, and the Ethernet. Like, yeah. Can you remote. actually log in to, can you like tell that into the you Linux machine? You can SSH machine? into the, SSH yeah. in? Okay. Yeah, so can. if you really want to like do something. Yeah. This and what's the communication protocols? SPI or I squared? No, it, the, the Arduino and the um, and the Linux machine communicates through a serial connection at 200 and something kilobit, which in a way it's fast enough because in the end you're exchanging pretty small messages. Yeah, so it's on the console. So this this the hardware serial port of the micro is connected. Yes, to Yes, it's connected okay. to the to the console of the Linux machine. Okay. So one, one thing that's pretty cool in there is that we also work with a company based in New York called Tembu. And they do like pretty amazing service that lets you, gives you like a single point of access to over 200 and more than 200 APIs. Mm -hmm. So using their service, really you make calls to one of their services and the, the service kind of has this thing they call Coreos, which kind of go through different sequences of events on different services. So you can really kind of uh, create complex applications, uh, offloading some of the activity over to their servers, but the using it is it's much simpler than so, I'm explaining. So ha have you used the UN for something? Well, you built something with it. Uh, yeah, I built some small projects, but I obviously I don't have a huge amount of time to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to you're, work you're on You're running it. Arduino, you can't. <laughs> no, I, I said, I, I said what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the demo project that you guys are like, well, this is the, example, the best project, this is like the first project you that could you, do yeah, but like, what, yeah. I mean. Well, for example, I can tell you that the technology behind the Arduino UN, we're actually using it in a European research project with a bunch of partners around Europe where basically we're making appliances talk to each other and so it's like uh, all the appliances in your house are in a kind of a social network. Mm -hmm. So what David Quartiers is doing is, is actually hacking into a bunch of different uh, appliances. So he's making like, you know, toasters and different things that you can connect mm. to and you can interact with. So, uh, for example, one of the people that works uh, for Arduino made it because this thing also runs like a, a web server that has some REST API. Mm. So if you're doing some web app, you can actually talk to the board directly through a REST wow. URL and make it do a lot of things. So he built this thing where you have an HTML5 interface on a web browser with different controls. And when you move the controls, you can actually visualize the data a little bit like what uh, what we saw before at the show and tell. So to make it very simple for you to just put an HTML5 based application onto the yeah. SD card, mm -hmm. you point your browser at it and then it talks to the board through this uh, REST interface. So this kind of interfacing becomes very simple. Mm. So HTML5 becomes something that we are more and more interested in and we want to provide and more and what's more. And what's the chip that's actually underneath there? It's called IR9331. It's an uh, Atheros, uh, oh, Qualcomm Atheros. Actually, how do you get them to sell it to you? Usually, it's difficult uh, to get those. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> so the question, so the interesting thing is that we we use that one because effectively the community had been reverse engineering everything, and in order to get the data sheet, you have to sign like a complex NDA, or you can download it from a Chinese website. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we had the advantage that the community had attacked this ar architecture and figured it out completely. Oh, cool. So OpenWRT was fully supported and everything. Then the, the company we're working with had 
a distributor in Taiwan that was able to provide them the, the chips in the mm. quantity they wanted. But then this is, is this made in Italy or is this made in, in no, Taiwan? No, this one actually, uh, the, 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 the feature of this, this thing is that it was actually, it's the first Arduino product that's made in, in Asia. Oh, so wow. it's made in Taiwan. Because this is where you get the chips. Yeah, also the, the company we're working with has a as a as an office in uh, the headquarters are in Switzerland and then mm -hmm. the, the, they have another office in, in Taiwan and that's where they manage all the manufacturing and everything. Also this thing has got Wi Fi and Linux and everything on, on one single board there, mm -hmm. which is something that we have really never done in this way. So you need okay. a factory that has experience in doing these kind of things mm. and also I don't know the exact details of the whole thing, but in order to certify and tweak and confi and sort of uh, tune the Wi-Fi, you need a special machine mm. that's approved by Qualcomm, and 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 it costs something like fifty plus thousand dollars. So okay. you need machines like that in order to be able to tune the Wi-Fi and, yeah, yeah. and 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 set all the parameters. So. Um, which is also one of the reasons why this kind of came out a little bit later than we expected because yeah. it's a very complex product. Yeah, it's the usual kind of 20 80 percent slash 20 percent rule. Yeah, like you know, it's very easy to get to the point of the project. It, the project Getting is the running. first one's easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then making it ready for production adds so much. You know, then the testing. Uh, you know, producing like a testing rig where you can reprogram all the processors on it and test it and everything it just takes, mm. takes, takes, takes time. So, a um, couple questions. So, uh, we have ours on order. They're, they're on their way. Yeah. Um, it's getting, it's, it's happening soon. So, they're 10th getting released. September. 10th of September. What's the, um, do you know the USD C price? Uh, yeah, I think they, um, the suggested retail price is $69. Okay. I don't... I think we're buying them for sixty, so I don't know if we're going <laughs> to have them for sixty-nine. But it'll be somewhere, somewhere close. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. Close. We didn't put the price on the site yet because we don't know. We don't know because we didn't know with the exchange uh, rate. Yeah, there's a fluctuation in the exchange rate at the moment that's messing up a few things. Yeah. Okay. So but, uh, within within a couple of weeks, there, these will there be in the hands harder, of people. Yeah. The idea is that you know clearly there are some Wi-Fi products that are cheaper because they're much much simpler, but they require you to use some yeah. kind of an online service. Mm. The advantage with this guy is that you can actually connect to complex web services directly from the board, yeah. and I think that actually uh, provides value for people that need to create this kind of application where they want to go to Facebook, do something, get some data, go to Foursquare, and then yeah. maybe tweet about it and do something else. You can do it all in Arduino from that. Uh, it's just a trade-off. Like, for example, like Electric Imp is much lower power, mm -hmm. but yeah. this is much more powerful. So it's just all trade-offs. Like yeah. some people want something that I can like run on the battery, and some things are like, well, yeah. I don't mind. If you can plug it in, you can get so much more power yeah. and capability. I like that it's a little embedded, embedded Linux computer, but for the folks who don't want to like mess around with Linux, which yeah. is like most people, um, you can stick to what you know, which is with Arduino, yes. and just get started. So this is like where we think, I personally think the Internet of Things is like, no matter what your skill level is, you can start doing stuff. So this is mm. a cool product. Yeah. And speaking of cool products, we got, there's one more that's <laughs> coming soon that um, folks always want to know about. And we also have these on order. Um, this is the Arduino robot. Right. And this has made appearances at, I think, Maker Faire yeah. and other places. So what is the, this is the first uh, Arduino that moves, right? <laughs> yeah. It can actually Mobile. run away from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we wanted to make a robot for quite some time, something sort of that would work mostly in the, maybe in the educational market. And then a few years ago, we met these two kids from Spain who participate in this competition called RoboCup, where they make these robots more or less in the same shape that play, that play football, mm -hmm. like soccer, you would call it mm -hmm. over here, but it's football. So they would kind of two robots in each team play football, and uh, the ball kind of emits infrared. How can they grab the ball? It's round. Oh, it doesn't grab the ball. So this thing like is... Like a soccer bot? But if you, on one side, there's, um, you don't see it here, on one side, the bottom board has got like some kind of a... a little scoop, right? Yeah, there's oh, got like some... Oh, it's got a little... So, so in the, 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 okay, the, so the RoboCup thing, uh, okay. when the robot kind of gets in front of the ball, it has a big solenoid that kind of pam, then kicks the ball. Oh, oh, so so it kind of grabs it like that and boom, kicks it. So the idea is that obviously this is not for that particular thing, but it was cool that these two kids, it, it's, it's, uh, it's actually one, one boy and a girl, they, they started off when they were like 14 doing robots with Arduino, mm. and then they developed the whole uh, robot themselves, 
and they have like, their competition robot is running the equivalent of like four Arduino Mega mm. in parallel because they have all sorts of functions they need to deal with. But uh, you know, it was interesting to work with them and say, you know, what what have you learned in this process, and what you think we should put in a robot like this so the idea is this this things this thing came out with like two layers like there's a bottom layer yeah. which is like controlling the motors and 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 doing like the sort of um, more like basic activities of a robot and then the, the top part has more sensors and it's got another equivalent of an arduino leonardo that you can program that kind of tells the bottom part what to do and then there's a bunch of connectors where you can add your own sensors. It's got some prototyping cool. area we can sort. And then there's an LCD screen, which, you know, it's uh, a, an extension of the LCD screen from, from Adafruit. And in fact, yeah, it's because the, the of that, we, we took the Arduino Adafruit, uh, sorry, the Adafruit L graphical LCD library, and we made it into the official Arduino graphical LCD library mm. for, uh, for this. So Yeah, another neat example of open source yes, working out. Yes, I love. <laughs> so this is this is, looks like it's kind of more for like schools or something. You think? I mean, it's, it's also like something that you can you know, it's for the competition. It, it, no, but also it's uh, we noticed that like you know we we had like a test sale at at, at Maker Fair in in California, and your know, parents would buy one because it comes with uh, about. 10, 15 examples, so yeah. you can get it and you can learn about it and, and you can build different projects. Mm -hmm. And also when you turn it on, the LCD screen has got a low uh, user interface mm. uh, that tells you, you know, tell me your name and you can customize your yeah. robot and then you have a pre-made softwares on it. So if you just want to try out with, with a kid, you just take some, you know, electrical tape, you yeah. draw like a like a path on, on, a, on a white surface and you put a robot on it and it will follow the line. Mm. Yeah. So you can try out the robot just like this without programming anything and then slowly you can get into programming. So it, it, I think it's something that works if you want to work with a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's something we've seen like parents want to buy because maybe the dad wants to kind of you know play with a kid and and have it, something. It's also like you said, the first, it's, I think it's the first Arduino <laughs> that in 15 minutes you can do something yeah. where sometimes there's a learning curve even if you're mm -hmm. like Arduino is very easy to use but this is like out of the box a kid, mm -hmm. parents together, and they're you know making little projects and there's activities and it's an Arduino that moves. So if yeah. you like Arduino, you want to do robotics. So we sp we spent quite a bit of time looking at all the sort of out of the box experience and the packaging and everything else. So we're trying to get to the point where there are more Arduino products that you sort of take out of the box and they do something immediately and then you can kind of dig in and yeah. figure things out. So it's like it's like not like well, what what do I do with this? It's like it's immediately obvious what you do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are great and uh, they'll be on display or for for sale at Maker Fair New York. Yes. Right? Um, they'll be in the Adafruit store. Um, they're on their way. Up, we yeah. just ordered them. So, um, we'll see how it goes. Now, I know you like all the Arduinos, but do you mm -hmm. have a favorite Arduino? <laughs> um, Is there anyone that you like in particular? It's hard to say. Wow. In a way, um, it's like favorite favorite children. I know this is. I put you, it's, I'm putting it's, you on the spot. It's, it's very yeah. You're putting me on the spot. I yeah. don't know. It's very. If you don't want to answer, I can tell you my favorite one. <laughs> but in, in a way, <laughs> I think uh, to me, there's one Arduino that I like, and I don't. I think it's still fairly misunderstood, which is the Arduino Leonardo, okay. which I like a lot. Uh, it's very simple, it's got only one chip, and it's got a lot of these little features like pretending to be a keyboard or a mouse. Yeah. So you can do like very cool things. Yeah. And so, you know, people are still used to buy the Uno because it's what they see everywhere. Yeah. But actually the Leonardo costs less and can do more in a way. Gotcha. So we're trying to figure out ways where we make it. One day we can kind of migrate away from gotcha. the Uno. Well, my favorite Arduino. It's obviously the micro. Is the micro. <laughs> Um, this is one of my favorite ones, and we have a cool project um, that we uh, have that you could turn it into a keyboard, uh, yeah. and we and have the small, next keyboard like. project. So um, that is also temporary. When kids do workshops, when uh, parents, when any type of educator does these uh, Arduino workshops, and there's tons, they can give a badge at the end. In fact, I think you're at Stevens Institute very soon. Yes, on the 11th of September. And uh, uh, we know that because the instructors needed to get Arduinos very fast. <laughs> and they said, is there anything you can do? And we said, we're going to give you Arduino badges uh, for free. Please uh, say, uh, 
hello to Massimo for us. So. <laughs> well, we knew we'd see you soon, too. So, okay, just a couple other housekeeping things. Um, you're going to be at the Hardware Innovation Summit? Yeah. September um, 18th? I'm speaking. You're speaking. Um, I don't know about what, but... <laughs> Um, and then um, you're at Maker Faire, yeah. and you're doing a 2.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. State yeah, of Arduino. Classic, yes. That's at Maker Faire. So, Half um, hour. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty big. So um, we're going to hop around now. We're going to do some of our normal show stuff. Um, yeah. We'll ask you uh, questions uh, shortly, but we're going to try to get through this stuff. So a um, couple uh, quick things. Mailbag this week for Adafruit. This is Packet the Mailbag. Our little, that's pretty yeah, cute. Yeah, isn't it cute? Yeah. Aww. So uh, we get letters from uh, customers and community all the time. This is from Chuck. Thanks for the quality components and wonderful circuit boards. They are well laid out with lots of labels. Thanks for getting sturdy packages to use for shipping. Thanks most for the step-by-step -step soldering instructions and for the great documentation and Arduino libraries. <laughs> I did not plan that. That was just the one that we had on for this week. We have That's, almost 200 GitHub repos. Yeah. We're getting close. We're like 10 away from 200. Yeah. Excited. Wow. 200 GitHub repos, 300 tutorials uh, very yeah. soon. And, Any day. Uh, yeah. It's, it's been intense. Uh, hundreds, thousands of lines of code that you've been working on. Um, we just celebrated four years of Ask an Engineer. We've been doing this four years. If you're a time traveler and want to mess with us or uh, thank us, you can just go back in time on any Saturday night for the last four years. <laughs> you know where we've been. Uh, Monday is Labor Day. Any packages will be going out on Tuesday. Yep, post fun. office, UPS, and yeah. everything is closed. So don't forget, these are some cool old photos. So it, Labor Day is a good day to Build a project. Yeah. Build a project. Um, some news in the world of open source hardware. Um, Becky Stern from Adafruit, Director of Wearable Electronics, will be at the Open Hardware Summit. Uh, Lamore and I will be there. You're going to be uh, yep. hanging around. Um, cool event. Uh, check it out. Uh, lots going on in the world of open source hardware. Um, if you haven't got your tickets, I think there's still tickets. Um, do check it out. Uh, Adafruit Learning System, new tutorial this week. Um, also Arduino related. This is all good timing. Um, NeoPixel. The Uber Got Guide. It. Yeah. So, um, Massimo, have you seen our NeoPixels? All these uh, little, um, uh, we have shields and we have all these uh, addressable LEDs. These are all they're so popular people with are. Arduino and they're um, really fun and artistic. The uh, guide that we just put out shows everything, how to use them. All mm. about it. We have like 10 different NeoPixel items. We have some we'll even show off today. And uh, Phil B, who wrote the best library for NeoPixels, also will take you a guided journey. The yeah. world of NeoPixel, how they work, all the details, powering them, yeah. shapes, scaling, yeah. different processors. So if, if you're into Arduino and you want to control a ton of LEDs, this is how you do it. The NeoPixel. This is the easiest way to control a lot of LEDs. Yeah, the NeoPixel library and then pick up the, the pixels. Um, every week we do Time Travel Tuesday, but this week I wanted to do something a little different. So Time Travel Tuesday, I go back in time, so I'm getting old. So Hackaday <laughs> and Gadget, uh, Make. So there's like 10 years of maker history. So mm -hmm. what I've been trying to do, so I'm getting old, so Hackaday <laughs> and Gadget, uh, Make. So there's like 10 years of maker history. So mm -hmm. what I've been trying to do is look back, you know, three, four, mm -hmm. five years and see what all of us were doing in the maker world. I mostly write this just for Lamour and for a few other people. I also like to look and see what, you know, I was doing like five, mm -hmm. six years yeah, ago. Yeah, what was I doing five well, years ago? Well, here's some interesting things. So in 2002, this is uh, 2012, sorry, last year, we had just released our Fritzing library. Oh, yeah. And also, Arduino just released the Wi-Fi oh, wow. shield, mm -hmm. the Wi-Fi. Um, also, last year, Bunny received a EFF Pioneer Award for Yay. open source hardware. Well deserved. Well deserved. 2010, the Arduino, Arduino Ethernet, Ethernet shield. shield. 2000, oh, uh, I'm skipping around. Uh, 2011, uh, my article, why the Arduino won and why, <laughs> why it's here to stay. Oh. Still, so a, a lot of Arduino sh uh, news. Yeah, all in August. All this was, week. Yeah, August. Well, August. August, August was kind of in a, big, a big month. And I have a question for Massimo because uh, this is uh, a post that I made. Um, this wasn't in August, but I wanted to revisit this. So back in 2000, uh, May 13th, 2011, I asked on Twitter how many Arduinos are out there in the wild. And you said about 300,000. How many Arduinos are out there now, do you think? Um, well, if you, you have like a big counter, this is mm, ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I have it. It's in a Google Doc <laughs> that I don't have access to. Now, I think um, 
a few, a couple, maybe a, m a couple of months ago, we calculated that of all the different types of Arduino devices, we actually reached about a million. Now. A million. Okay. okay. You heard it here, uh, here folks. One yes, million Arduinos. Really yeah. I had estimated um, that it would be sometime around now that we'd be sailing past the, the Yeah, because it would bit. double and then double again. Yeah. So about a million. Yeah. That's great. Of the official ones. Official ones. The, the, the Chinese copies. The, yeah, the derivatives, like, who knows? It's probably, yeah, you know, but derivatives millions. is a different story. I'm talking about the counterfeit copies. The counterfeit That's, ones. But yeah. I'm, I'm saying altogether with, like, it, I actually don't see that many counterfeits compared to, like, genuine ones. So I think altogether it's probably maybe two million, right? Yeah. Mm. So it would be safe to say. But, like, there's, like, so many derivatives. The, one of the problems is I still get asked from, like, students trying to do their thesis and everything, like, how many Arduinos they, they, they try. They want me to be a resource because I wrote this article a long time ago. Mm. Um, would it be safe for anyone to say there is definitely one million Arduinos in the wild now? Yeah. Okay, great. Absolutely. Perfect. One million, great. I'll you heard it so. here first. I can, at some I point can send I will, a link At some point now. I will make an article for the blog with showing the graph. In oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I remember that graph. There were some interesting points in there because, you know, there were some moments where the sales kind of kind of started to jump and they are related to specific events. So that's Yeah. And then um, all the way back in 2007, um, this oh. is when uh, oh you commemorated the 10,000 boards. Yeah. Yeah, 2007. I actually mentioned that the other day I was being interviewed for a chapter on a book about makers. And actually I pointed out to that particular event when you wrote the article. You know, we told you that we reached 10,000. You wrote the article on make yeah. about that. And, and it was for us like, oh, my God, 10,000. Yeah. And now if you make something in 10,000 pieces, you're like, uh, you're like what did we do wrong? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, well, no. Now that we have about almost 500 distributors, for us, when we make a, something, we have to make it at least in about 10,000 pieces yeah. because they just... The, just to the, distribute them. Boom, it goes. Yeah. So, uh, okay, <laughs> so thank you for being part of the Time Travel Tuesday <laughs> Arduino edition. Yeah, that was thank you Arduino for history. Yeah. All right. Wow, the walk down memory lane. Um, every Wednesday we do Wearable Wednesdays on the Adafruit site, so we have all the news that's fit to blog in Wearable Electronics. Um, Becky Stern has her show that she does every week. We have another live show. Did you know this? We have a live yes, show. I... Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Check out that awesome logo. Yeah, that's a neat logo. This week, um, we showed the Firewalker shoes. <laughs> and uh, there's a really cool band in Williamsburg um, named Amagata, Amanamaguchi. 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 I can't say that word. Um, we have a learning guide. And here is the video. Bill, you're looking so serious. Why don't you lighten up? It's easy to mod your sneakers to light up when you walk. And today we're going to show you how to add NeoPixel strip and a simple sensor that detects your steps with Flora, Adafruit's wearable electronics platform. For this project, we're using Velostat. What is that? Bellistat is a material that becomes less resistive when pinched, so we'll be using it to make a basic sensor in the heel of the shoe that can detect each time you put your weight down. Just tape one piece of conductive thread to each side of a small piece of Bellistat, forming a loop under the tape. Then pick up the tails with a needle and stitch them up the side of the shoe, connecting one to ground and the other to an analog input on the Flora board. Each time Flora sees the resistance of the Bellistat drop, it knows okay, and since we're tight on time tonight and we want to get to everything, here are the shoes. I was going to wear them and do a demo, but um, I don't think really? I... I turned them on. What? Yeah, yeah so you have to press there's... in the middle, not on the... Yeah, so this uses Flora, and it has that little um, switch when you press it, you know, through the Velostat. Yeah. And uh, watch the full video and the tutorial, but uh, I'll probably be wearing these at the Open Source Hardware <laughs> Summit. They're so. cool. Yeah, this is a good use of yeah. NeoPixels, Flora, and then a, a basic pressure sensor. The nice thing about the Velostat is because it's not an FSR, you can actually press it as much as you want. It won't break because it's just plastic that yeah. changes resistance. Mm -hmm. It's actually a perfect usage for shoe sensing. Okay. Uh, 3D Thursday, just going to go over one thing real quick every Thursday, the news and 3D printing. Um, the digitizer is coming from MakerBot. We'll have them in the store shortly. Um, it's a digital scanner, and we'll be one of the first ones to have it. Um, it is uh, pretty neat. You can scan in physical things. Um, we're coming up with some fun things to do and to scan. So. It's in the store. All right, before we get on to new products, the code is Arduino, 10% off of everything in the Adafruit store. Lady Ada, let's get through these new products as we fast as we can. We have to go with them very fast. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Go, go, go. What, yeah. what are the new products for you this week? Okay. 
First up, we have a new version or a modified version of the inductive charging modules. We had these in five volts, and now we have them in three volts. And I can even show a little demo over here. Um, so this is a one watt white LED. So this is a three volt, basically, LED. Um, and it draws about 300 milliamps. And it's connected to this coil. And this coil is inductively coupled with this coil. So as it gets oh, closer, yeah more power is transferred. So you want to have it be kind of coaxial and you can see as it gets closer, more power is transferred. So you can use this for, if you want to do a waterproof project and you want to power it or charge it through something, you can have plastic, wood, whatever, anything non-metallic in between these two coils. Um, you know, the, the more current, closer it is, but you can have it up to 10 millimeters away or so, about yeah. a centimeter, and still get maybe 200 milliamps so out. Wireless charging, basically. Wireless charging, DIY wireless charging. Okay. And this is the three volt version. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next up, this is a power supply. There this are many is, like them, but this one is ours. This one, we <laughs> wanted to have a power supply that was bigger than our two, two amp power supply, but smaller than our 10 amp. It's uh, FCC and UL certified. These are really, really nice chargers, uh, um, sorry, uh, power supplies. Five volt, four amp, Really great for that time when you want less than 10, more than two. Yeah. And okay. the price is kind of nice too, it's 15 bucks. Okay, I'm gonna zoom through these really fast. These are buttons. Everybody loves these buttons. Yeah, these and are tons of them. Um, buttons that we have that are um, both momentary and latching. And they come in white and blue. So I'll show this one is momentary and then this okay. one. So this is the white one, so it's got a nice white LED, and then I can uh, unplug it from power. So you can see it's it's white when it's off, and they're panel mount, and they're pretty low cost. And the switch is separated then from the button, so you can have the button turn on when the light, or the light turn on when the button's pressed, or vice versa, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a locking version of the blue one. So let me get this blue one out and quickly swap these. One second. So this is the blue one, um, and the nice thing about this is it locks. So it's you know open, it's off, and when you press it, it turns on. So this is more like an on-off switch, okay. whereas the momentary are you know you press to close. So two different types, blue and white. Okay, next up. Oh, this is a um, FPC stick. It's uh, a 0.5 millimeter one. I've been doing a lot of stuff with. Um, displays that use FPCs, a 0.5 millimeter pitch, and I developed this board actually for my use because I had to like connect to all these different displays and, and adapters and whatever. So uh, I thought it'd be handy. It's just the circuit board. If you do surface mount and you're ever connecting to flexible circuits, this is kind of handy. I, I like it when you release tools that you made for yourself because I, I know if you if you're using it, it's very interesting to at least. Yeah. 2,000 people. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like a high-end um, prototyping SMT tool, but um, 0.5 millimeter pitch is so common. And the way I designed it, you can use any size up to 50 um, pin. So you yeah. can you know place multiple ones if you need to. And it's breadboard friendly, or you can just connect wires. OK, uh, last up, I would say that this is kind of uh, followed by uh, Massimo. This is the star of the show. So <laughs> um, both very bright. Uh, this is our new uh, line of NeoPixel strips, uh, 144. Um, it's too bright, Lady Ada. What's going on here? Like, this is just so bright. Look at it's, this. Uh, it's not only bright, but very <laughs> dense. Yeah. So there's 144 LEDs per meter. So it's more than twice as uh, dense as the LED strip we had before. And it's on extra thick um, flex PCB. So we had the factory actually make it extra thick for us. It's one meter long, and it's 144 LEDs, and it's a lot of LEDs, and it's NeoPixel, so you only need one pin to, to control all of them. Um, this is and how are you kind controlling of it right demo. now? Oh. <laughs> An Arduino. An Arduino. Uh, using Philby's awesome Arduino code that he wrote. Um, so yeah, this is just like a super high density LEDs, and it comes in both black um, with white LEDs here. Is that Adafruit see. black? Adafruit black. I think it is. It's official Adafruit black. <laughs> We've uh, trademarked that. And also white PCB um, as well. So compared to the shoes that we have, the shoes are 60 LEDs per meter. And you can see that these are twice as dense. Yeah. So these are pretty intense. They are more expensive because just there's so many damn LEDs. But you get 144 individually addressable, 24-bit color, ultra-bright LEDs per meter. 
how can you go wrong? <laughs> you can't go wrong. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Super bright. Boy. Super dense. Many of these, uh, many of our LED products are on the playa right now because yeah, we a, a week before had... Burning Man, there's the Burning Man meltdown. There is the Burning <laughs> Man meltdown. Where people are like, oh my god, I, need, I didn't buy enough stuff. Can you overnight it tomorrow? Can I, I show have up this at project <laughs> and I told people I'd work. I, I came up with it the day after Burning Man ended and then yeah. I put it off for 11 and a half months and yeah. now I got to do it. I've been there, right. I've, I've, five years, so I've definitely okay. done it myself. Wait, Ada, that was new products. Okay. You did it. I was. I had to go fast. You went fast. Thank you. All right. Um, so right now we're going to do questions. I'm going to uh, get through them as fast as I can. Questions for Massimo. Questions for Lady Ada. Um, you're going to be on speed round. So yeah, yeah, are you ready? Speed can round. you do this? <laughs> um, uh, someone asked uh, before. Uh, it's going to take a second for the chat. Wow, this strip is like warm. Do you have a favorite Arduino derivative or Arduino compatible out there? Is there anything that that you like? Somebody who's done something cool. So you're like, oh, that's clever. Well, um, actually, I it's hard. thought about it. There's so many There's that so it's many, very yeah. difficult for me to. It's like when somebody asks me, what's your favorite Arduino project? Uh, I know, There's that's like 5,000. Oh it's hard. like this. Okay. I, think my, I think my favorite that isn't an Arduino is actually um, like the Teensy. I really like that. Oh, no, that's okay. The Teensy cool. I like a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's kind of cute because it, it's like the Teensy is like, it's it's not an Arduino, but it's like kind of Arduino compatible, yeah, but it takes it in a different direction. And I kind of like that. Yeah. We like what Paul does. So. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, good. Questions are now loading in. All right, Massimo, will there ever be an official fem Arduino or one that small? <laughs> um, Micro is pretty small. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not sure. I think the thing about it is, um, well, the Nano is pretty small. Yeah. Nano's pretty small. But the well, now the micro is The micro is small, but, but the, 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 the problem with the Femtu Arduino is it doesn't, it's not breadboard friendly. Yeah. And so that, it, the, the Arduino, I feel like it's, it's beginner friendly. And mm -hmm. you guys try to make it as easy as possible for beginners to get started, which means making sure it plugs into a breadboard, it comes with the headers attached. Yeah. yeah also, like, the Femtu Arduino is not something I want to manufacture. It's just got too much emotions attached to it. It's yeah. OK. Uh, next up, can the LED strip uh, be trimmed to shorter lengths? A more. You can you can trim it. Um, it does have little cut marks. Um, if you look at the product page, there's there's a really clear photo. Um, but it's just once you cut it, it's not super easy to solder to it. The pads mm -hmm. are not as big as the uh, 60 LED per meter because it's you know there's not a lot of space. Okay. Um, what's uh, with the unpopulated um, IC footprint on the Yoon? I guess there's a little unpopulated spot. I think it's because it's QFN or QFP. No, oh, there's there's actually yeah there's a set of pads around the chip because with supply you never know you know sometimes oh, okay. Gianluca says oh you know Atmel is not shipping this chip this month so we have to find another gotcha. place so we we have two the Leonardo footprints. is like that too or the yeah. SMD Arduino it, it's either know. QFN or QFP depending on whatever's available yeah because sometimes product poof, disappears so yeah. you have to kind of run around the world and find an alternative but That's the great. nice thing is that you have two options yeah. uh, next up uh, Massimo how did you first get Arduinos into the world and what would you say was the most significant approach getting Arduinos to makers around the world like when you're selling them, how so did you get them out there when we started there were no makers of cold makers you yeah. know, make didn't the, exist we were mostly working with students so the advantage is working with design students is the design students are usually pretty good at uh, publishing their projects online and making them look really cool so if when people started making projects with Arduino and publishing them online people said oh wow that's a cool project and then they they said, what's this made with? Oh, it's made with Arduino, okay. And then that sort of kicked off the first round of sort of, uh, sort of the first viral sort of marketing mm. of Arduino was that. Because a lot of projects you see online are made by people who, you know, are not into the aesthetics of products. Yeah, they're just engineers. They're just like, oh, I got this thing working. So you get a picture of a breadboard with a bunch of wires. That doesn't, you know, it's, it's cool for another engineer, but not for everyday people. While Designers, they tend to like produce a beautiful object, shoot a nice video, a like beautiful picture. Yeah. So when it's totally faked, but no, it's <laughs> sometimes it's photoshopped. It, sometimes yeah. it is, but <laughs> but they're good at it. Yeah. All right, uh, moving around. There's a lot. There's a lot of questions. I'm gonna try to get through them. We're gonna run a little bit late. Sorry about that, guys. Um, next up, do you have any advice for testing Arduino code before it's on the device? Are there any simulators or other tools? So I know that there are simulators for Arduino. We don't like them because we think people should work on the real thing. You know, that's just a philosophical thing that we, you know, we don't 
yeah. like simulators or that kind of stuff. Also, it's never easy to simulate a full uh, product. So, oh, so how are you going to connect sensors to it? You don't know, yeah. inputs. So how I, you, I kind of I prefer like people working physical directly, computing. You know, just use yeah, it. Just do it. Okay. Uh, next up. That should be a Someone's Just only been to one place in Italy, Turin. Can Massimo tell us that the Arduino headquarters is near there? It would be neat if it was close. Is it? So, well, no. The <laughs> it's funny. There's the, the Arduino headquarters. It's the, Arduino doesn't have one big office and that's it. No it's Arduino a, tower yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't plan okay. to make any massive building called Arduino. No, no, no. There's uh, in Torino. We have an office which is also a makerspace, and that's where you, if you want to go, you can actually show up and... Makerspace, really okay. It's, yeah, it's a makerspace, so you can just go there, and it's really fun. Then there is the Arduino. One of the factories that makes the most Arduinos is kind of like 40 minutes outside of uh, Torino in a place called Ivrea, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not something you can visit. It's a factory so factory. Just like Adafruit, you can't go, you can't yeah, go yeah. in. We have photos. Uh, thank you again for letting us tour that oh, time. We put, we put tons of photos up there. In fact, I have one little quick snippet because I, I didn't know how much time we we're going to have. This is when we were in the Arduino factory. We can all share the uh, oh, this took right. place in the MDC, us for deciding to get ours. So this is where the Arduino is. Wow, that looks just like my picking place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got the exact same, uh, exact right. same model. Um, next, well. next up. Um, oh, if you could ask the community out there to make a killer project with the Yoon, what, what type of thing would you like to see? That's what I asked. Uh, <laughs> they're asking too. Okay. Well, you know, really, I, uh, I want to see some interesting projects. Um, obviously, this is designed for what people call the Internet of Things. Yeah. So it is designed so that you can interact with like complex sort of web services. So it'd be interesting to see what people can do uh, really creating like a device that can really tap into this online services and kind of cross the data and, and, and do some cool things with it. Okay. Because you, you, with the GPS, you can figure out where you are, and then you go to Foursquare, and you can get data, and then you go to Facebook. Yeah. So it's a way that you, you can really cross different services using this. So I think those are the most interesting application where you can start really to use these online services because it, the Yoon allows you to do all of this without having to use some proprietary cloud somewhere. Yeah. Mm. All right. Good question. Good answer. Um, yeah, I do like that. I'm, I'm kind of always finicky about like, oh, I have to use it with the service. Um, next up, um, what do you think about the uh, at Mega chips, the uh, the uh, AT, the the ATX Mega, sorry, chips? Uh, we never really. Megas, right, lady? Yeah, they, yeah, I mean, they're they're kind of they are unusual. They're weird. Yeah. So what happens is that I see that. Atmel is actually taking some of the cool feature of, of the X Megas and moving them to the new Cortex M0 Plus ARM processor they're, they're making. Oh. So some of the features are kind of transferring over. But for us, I don't think there was never an incentive to kind of invest a lot of energy into kind of making an Arduino core for, for those products. Uh, because we wanted to explore the Atmega more. Mm. Okay. There's still a lot of Atmega products that we haven't really touched yet. All right. Um, why are breadboards called breadboards? Like bread. <laughs> because they used to, they're solderless breadboards, actually they're called solderless breadboards, and they're a solderless version of when people used to wire wrap on a breadboard, they would take a wooden plank and they would use nails and they would wire wrap wow. on a breadboard. Okay. That's the answer. There's a board um, for bread. Cosmo, bread. will there be a new version of the Arduino software when the Yun is out? Yes. Okay. So there will be a, a, a version of 1.5.x which also has this cool feature that allows you to, you when you turn on the IDE, you click on the board menu, it scans the network looking for all the UNs. The UNs are using the Bonjour protocol from Apple, which yeah. also has different names depending MD on the MDNS yeah. is the generic Yeah, exactly. Name, right. And so you can click on it and you can program your UN over the Wi-Fi okay. oh, connection. Cool. All right. Um, someone wants to know if they can root the Yoon or hack it so they can run another version of Linux if they wanted to. You can do whatever because we uh, provide the source code for the OpenWRT up to the last line of code. It's, it's, ju it's just on like GitHub. the TP-Link routers. Yeah. You can do what, anything you can do with it, those cheap TP-Link routers. So you know, in the Arduino tradition, the day it goes live, every file is going to be there. You can do whatever. Okay. But if you want a Wi-Fi router, you should probably just get a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> okay. 
There's a uh, request. Someone wants to know if uh, are you planning any um, other Arduino robots, smaller ones, different ones? Yeah, we are planning to probably make something smaller at some point, but not now. Right. Now we just, just so got this, yeah, this, this robot. Yeah, yeah. robot your robot. Break. All right. I think we got through most of them. Okay. Okay. What's eleven. Thank you. That was speed round. Speed round. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, once again, um, thank you, of course, for being on the show. We're going to do a, a trivia question now. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to do a trivia question. And how uh, much does Massimo weigh? No. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's something that's. <laughs> <laughs> there's a like, carnival. There's, there's a, car a carnival. There's game. a carnies that can guess. Yeah. That's a confidential <laughs> information. Um, the answer is not Yoon. Yeah. Um, what are the rules, Lady Ada? Rules are if you've won before, you can't enter again. One. Winner per hour lifetime, me and Phil's. Yeah. Um, what is the prize? So the prize is going to be a yun, but we don't have the. We yet, don't but have We're going to save it. So we'll save you a yun. So when we get them, hopefully yeah. we'll send so you. So the first person. We'll also just beat up Musk. He probably has one in his pocket somewhere. No, I don't think he has any. No. Okay. They're very they're 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 very sought after. They're sought after. We have a lot um, of people who want them. So here's the trivia question: If you paid attention during the chat, Massimo mentioned the name of the. Massimo mentioned the name of the company that they worked with on the Yoon. Oh, wow. Yes. Ooh. What is the name of the company that they teamed up with? Now, this is probably online somewhere, too, right? If you search for Yoon, and you could find who they collaborated with. And that's one of the things I like about Arduino is when they collaborate with different companies, they always, we all celebrate each other because it's open source. It's crediting and saying, doing shout outs. Yeah. Hat tips. Hat tips. So let's see who gets it first. It's not Skynet, <laughs> it's not Tribby. What is the name of the company? What would you say their role in this? Were they co-designers? Develop hardware developers? Manufacturing. Uh, yeah, well, you know, they, uh, they actually developed uh, their own custom version of OpenWRT. They call Linino. And okay. they actually had been working on this AR9331 for a while before we... Started. AR9331, okay. Yeah, yeah, so... All right, nobody's got it yet. Um, Apple is not the correct answer. Wayne Enterprises is not correct. British Petroleum. These are really oh, there you go. Dre thirty six one two two four. Dog Hunter. Dog Hunter. That's correct. Yeah, it was a very unique name, so that's why I thought that was a good trivia question. Yeah. All right. Okay, you cool. get a yun. excellent email support at adafruit.com and you will get a yun to set. You'll get the first one, the first one that we take out of the box. <laughs> it is yours, Dre two six five whatever nine seven eight. <laughs> right, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, special thanks to everybody from Adafruit who came out and uh, the staff who came out into the chat, John Deneer, Becky, George, um, I think a couple other people did. Uh, thank you everyone at the show and tell. Um, we're going to be here next week right after the Open Hardware Summit. We're coming back and then we're going to do a show. We'll do a show. And uh, Bossimo, it's always great to have you on the show. You've been on Ask an Engineer a couple times oh, so far. You. Yeah, this is the third time. You're like, uh, Saturday Night Live has a few uh, uh, co-hosts, <laughs> the, the, five, the five timers, so like like Alec Baldwin or something like that. So you're, you're uh, well, he like lives down the street or something. Wa right? Was Amanda Wozniak has been on the show she's like six times the something. most, and right. uh, so she's the Justin Timberlake. Of she's the Justin Timberlake <laughs> of engineering, and then I think you're you're up there. All right, you're up there. Cool. So. Um, Looking forward All right. to getting to the five timers. Here's a picture of a cat for the kids that are waiting for the picture of the cat. <laughs> because if I don't show the picture of the cat, I get an email that says, why didn't you show a picture of the cat? Meow. And with that, here is... The cat is, is a dog hunter. Your moment of zener. <laughs> <laughs>